Peace, peace, family. It's Mass Quasi, go hard, Gambia. I made a commitment to make myself present so that we can offset some of the personalities that have been dominating the YouTube uh, community. Very important, man. It's very important that we make sure that, you know, we make positive contributions on the continent as we know. And tonight we're going to talk about <clears throat> this YouTube hater culture that we see in the Gambia. And, you know, it's important that, you know, we address these things. There must be accountability. Hey, Kitty. <laughs> there must be accountability in this movement. No, no intelligent person should could believe that we can be in a country, a whole nother country, and have no type of accountability, and then <clears throat> there not, there there not be any type of repercussions. You know, uh, there have there have been uh, repercussions, repercussions, many repercussions because of our lack of unity and our lack of. Um, just general uh, intelligent motion. And I think that, you know, that that's a part of our legacy, man. That's a part of the trauma of being, you know, uh, the black man and woman in America is that we, you know, we have not established ourselves or, you know, in terms of an agenda, you know, or having purpose, you know, you know, and those are very serious things, you know, so we find ourselves where in America, you know, we've pretty much been, we pretty much been hold on one second we pretty much been replaced we have been replaced come on people come on i mean since i've been back in the states just the gas just the gas in the your car you know, I've seen everybody with their cars and their vehicles and things like that. And that's just like a burden. You know, I've been I haven't had a need for a car in a couple years being in, in West Africa. And it's crazy because <clears throat> the car is a burden. That's a burden for a lot of people because they got to get back and forth from work. And in and, 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 and those situations, they're driving you know, miles and miles, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 miles to work, you know, in this society, in, in, in American society, man, they just made us like cogs in a machine that don't make cog that don't need cogs anymore. And people are spending huge amount of money just in gas and transportation, moving around, going back and forth, all uh, under individuality all under individuality you know imagine if 10 families a, a one family did the shopping for 10 families all right 10 families come together i don't know what you need to do sam's club you know we had it in our house we had at one time years ago uh 15 uh, about 18 people there and we had two people that went out and did the shopping you know they would go to uh, uh bj sam clubs and, and you know they would just come back with just a uh, wholesale everything tissue you know you know milk you know we had two refrigerators in the house we had a deep freezer you understand what i'm saying we were saving we were saving that and that's just a little simple strategy especially when you look at it like this especially when you look at other foreign nationals like let's say that the hispanic and, uh, and the mexican uh, brothers and sisters that's been coming in for the last 30 years when I was living in uh, Lawrenceville off a of paper mill road in uh, Georgia, right across the street from us, there was a, a, a Spanish family there. It was two Spanish families that were there. So every day you would see the two the two men, they would get up, they would get in their truck and they were going out. They were doing sheet rock, something with carpentry. They had a ladder. The idea is they got up and they was having their business. So uh, after a while, you see the lady the, the the women there they started a maid service then they were going out and then 
they they moved out the people that was there first and i'm like where are y'all going and they said we're going to another house right they said we're going to another house and then somebody else was moving in with the people that was you know under them okay you know that's serious economic strategy right there what economic strategy do we have in our black community in in the u.s none outside of everybody you know pushing towards a, a higher education and going to school something that has not worked the u.s debt uh student loan debt 1.75 trillion dollars it's almost like car debt. It's almost equal to the debt of car loan debt. $1.75 trillion. Two major areas of our life that just debt and it's just burning to us. You know, to drive around to get into debt. Think about it, man. Think about that system that we in. They call it the rat race, but we don't really think about it. You know, you got a car, you got all of this, you know, burden and responsibility with the car. You know, you have to get the car. You got payments on it. You got to put gas in it. You got to have insurance on it. Then you got to get up in it every day to go back and forth to work. Drop the baby off at uh, daycare. Then go to work. Pick the baby up. Come home. Have to go back and forth with Walmart. You got this. You got this vehicle and all. It's just you know supporting you in that debt that you have. You know. Imagine if you don't have have that. Like I said, I was been in a situation where I've been in a situation for a minute where I, uh, you know, I, I had, you know, I made all my income from home. That's been a blessing. Over twenty years, I've been financially independent, working from home. You know, however, in the time that we are living in, you know, especially those who are looking to come over to uh, West Africa, we definitely have to have a uh, a financial plan. That makes sense. It have to make sense. You know, even now, you know, people that are in this, my daughter just graduated and I had a conversation with her and I said, hey, listen, everybody in this graduation class have going to end up into uh, going into debt, you know, um, and th it's already known that the average person changes careers four times in their lifetime the average person so we're telling our children hey go out here and get this debt you know go ahead and chase this particular career idea and spend you know four plus years you know getting a degree only to for them not to to get a job in 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 that particular industry and have that loan now if the person is going to school and you have some type of business out there you know, then, you know, and they work for your business. That's one thing. However, what we know for sure is that the, the American system has not worked for us and it's not working and it don't look, they don't look promising. In any case, in growing as a community, we have our challenges because you have, you know, people who come from, you know, not having anything. And when they get something, they want to they want to be able to secure it and they see any anything that might be a, come up against it they see that as a threat okay that's poverty thinking you know that's the poverty mindset where you saying hey listen oh if uh, uh if, if somebody else come to the table you know then then i'm gonna have less so what we're seeing this is what we're seeing over in uh, the gambia so it, it's a it's an uh, unfortunate thing, but it's reality. And then, you know, however, we're going to address it because there has to be accountability in the movement. There is going to be accountability and it's coming to a point, you know, that the attention is being brought. Attention is being brought out and, you know, it's, it's just naturally progressing in that way. And we want to be able to, you know, make sure I, I wish we as a community could have done more to govern our own community. When that was done, you know, when the attempt to uh, govern our community was done, it, it came under attack, you know, and it, it was because of uh, forces outside of the uh, African, pan-African movement. There were forces within and without that were, you know, uh, causing the most problems that distracted us, that distracted us from, you know, this glorious, glorious time and mission that we have. 
now that most of the distraction is gone, we still have people who are have the the the, uh, the gall to try to, to continue on a path of you know a negative, and that's going to be addressed. That's definitely going to be addressed, and it's good. It's good because people have to be put in their place, and they're going to have to be checked. And that's going to happen when you're doing foolish things. You can't put yourself in liability. You understand what I'm saying? You can't put yourself in liability. But you, you know, us who are builders, we know people who are going to come. They're going to try to, you know, uh, jeopardize. They don't care because they really don't have nothing. So, you know, if they can tear you, what you got going on down, they're happy because they're already down. They already don't have anything. You know, in any case, we're going to put the safeguards in place and make sure that we can uh, protect against that. I actually have a video, man. I was watching the other day on Netflix and I, I want to watch the first two minutes of it. Anytime you you come over here to Go Hard Gambia and if you're watching this, please like, please like this and uh, subscribe to my channel. Because anytime you turn on my channel, you know, you're going to hear some real talk from somebody that's been uh, went to the Africa uh, market seven, uh, seven years ago by himself. 2015, I went over there. And since then, I've married into the culture. I have uh, four children in the Gambia. I have family there. You know, it's awesome. It's, I, I mean, I've had an amazing experience. You know, the only challenges that I, uh, I've had is when I begin to work within the repack community at a high, high level. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm seeing a pattern of uh, things happening that we need to uh, uh, be aware of because everybody's investment is at risk. Everybody's investment. If we're over there and we're not doing the right thing and we got people who are out there promoting the movement, who do not have integrity, who do not care about the movement, who do not care about accountability. You know, if we have people like that out there and they're overwhelming the movement. To a point where it's becoming problems and issues with people within the movement being, you know, a uh, fighting. And having, you know, there being a tax on financial, uh, uh, you know, uh, activity within the uh, repack community, you know, so all of this stuff, all of this happened. And, you know, we are seeing now the Gambian authorities, you know, uh, looking into this. There'll be more. Everything come out in time. You understand? It's a nice, slow process. However, everything is going to be addressed and everything and everyone's going to be held accountable. You know, so you're going to get that real talk right here. Mass Quasi, Go Hard Gambia, you know, like, you know, check out some of my other videos where I actually uh, address the issues that are taking place. You know, however, let's go ahead and let me uh, and I'm all new to this and I'm trying to, you know, uh, master, you know, being able to deliver this, you know, story. Let's take a look at this video. This is how Netflix, how to become a tyrant. So in this video, it talks about, you know, the steps. Come on, you know you want it. We talked about absolute power. Do absolute power create absolute corruption? And it absolutely do. And this is what we're seeing. I hope you guys can see this. Someone send me a message and let me know. Absolute power. Come on. You know you want it. You just don't know how to get it. But I do. There's a playbook. A series of tactics that history's most infamous tyrants use to achieve unimaginable power. Each in his own unique way. Now, there is one small catch. This path okay. imaginable power. So I'm actually I'm actually gonna break down. And we're going to look at some things. Let me get back to the stream, uh, stream yard. I hope you guys can see that.
I know you guys could could have heard it, <laughs> could hear it, but let me go ahead and do it again. Come on, you know you want it. Let me go ahead and start from the beginning. Does absolute power act, bring about absolute corruption? It absolutely does. Anybody that's an individual that have power, they're gonna abuse it. It's already known throughout absolute history. Absolute power. Come on, you know you want it. You just don't know how to get it, but I do. There's a playbook, a series of tactics that history's most infamous tyrants use to achieve unimaginable power each in his own unique way okay seize power i'm gonna stop sharing so we know through our history you know uh you know any one given power without any accountability that they abuse the power that's just the nature of man we've seen it we've seen what it what happens throughout history when that goes unchecked okay so we're seeing the same thing in our movement in gambia you know we have people who it's not it's not a movement like that it's just people promoting pan-africanism under their own brands and there's no accountability so we are seeing uh it's abuse of power in that you know the people who are looking on and this is where we have to be intelligent we have to be able to understand that the people that we're looking at they are not they do not represent the movement. They represent individual brands. And they, uh, in terms of movement, they're probably the least uh, likely to uh, produce, you know, anything that's going to be beneficial for us as a group because they are looking to promote their own ideal, their own value system, and uh, their own legacy. Okay. that That's, you know, we have a collective legacy. We have a collective legacy that we should be uh, working towards. Okay, so the first thing a uh, 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 tyrant do is, is seize power, and that could be done in many ways. That's done in many ways, you know. So we've seen where uh, distractions are created in order to gain favor of an audience. So these are one of the things that we have to look at. You know, uh, people are vying for power. I seen uh, someone made a post. They said, you know, uh, the, the YouTubers, everybody have their fieldum. They don't want to give up their fieldum in the Gambia. So you have these, you know, these. It's not many. It's just, you know, it's a couple main gangs. You know, the YouTubers, they're just pretty much gangs. Uh, so there's a couple main ones and, uh, you know, every, you know, uh, and they're, they're kind of fighting, you know, uh, everybody have their, their, their position. And now, however, that's one of the main things. So the second thing, crush your rivals, right? I don't know if you guys see that. Let me show you my screen. All right. There you go. How to become a tyrant. Crush your rivals. All right. So when a tyrant will pretty much do anything. Lies, deceit. All types of underhand uh, tactics to crush their rivals. And if you check out this Netflix, you're going to see a lot of ideas that's played out in the Ray Pat movement, you know, that's used by pretty much tyrants. Rain through terror, you know, this one is a big one that's being used in Gambia. And it's so unfortunate that there's so many people in Gambia that have fear of, uh, you know, that YouTubers there. And I'm like, you know, just because, you know, they don't want to have their name dragged through the dirt. They don't want to have their name dragged through the dirt. So you have, you know, people who are in fear. I mean, it, it's so ridiculous. It's crazy because a tyrant, they reign through terror. You know, and uh, it don't always have to be at the, you know, uh, brute force. 
you know, it's emotional force, it's it's a verbal force, it's you know, it's economic force. People may feel that you know uh, th this person could damage them in that way. In any case, control the truth. Contro control the truth, and I and I'm, I'm going to make a commitment, and we're going to. Uh, I'm going to work with uh, Kiki to break down some things because Kiki has really, really uh, invested a lot of time and, and her energy into that. That is somebody that everyone needs to support and so everyone needs to donate to. Not these people that's promoting their own cause because they're only setting you up to lose. They're putting you in a situation where, you know, even the Gambian people are dissatisfied with them. You guys don't know. You guys are looking on and you, you know, you catching some of these personalities for the first time or just seeing one side. I'm, I live in the Gambia. I'm telling you, I live in the Gambia. I have family there. I have family at the highest level of government in the Gambia. OK. Family that I'm married into and I have children and things of that nature. So I know what's going on. Everything in Gambia is about family. It's about family in the Gambia. I want to make sure I get this light nice and bright so y'all can see me, man. So everybody's investment is at risk as long as we are not, you know, uh, holding accountable those who are distorting and perverting the movement uh, through lies and promoting their own capital agenda against our collective, you know, our collective movement. We can't have a bunch of capitalists over in uh, foreign countries because it's uh, it, it already failed for uh, failed. We already failed in doing that here in the States. We already failed. There's not a lot of people that's out there being successful in business. It all look good. It's all fluff. But, you know, everyone's living check to check. Everyone's struggling with their business. And if any type of large amounts of money come through to help people with their business, it's always, you know, uh, squandered. We, the, 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 the overall society has told us, taught us how to be debt slaves, you know, starting with the student loan then with the car loan, then with the house loan. This whole country is in debt to uh, to other foreign uh, nations because they, they, they look pretty everywhere. <laughs> all the national, all the park and the, uh, the park and recreations department and all of that, do your research. You know, understand for New York and all of these cities and all this beautification, all, for all of that stuff to, to look beautiful, that money had to come from somewhere. You understand what I'm saying? America is in a huge, huge amount of debt. That is going to affect everybody, those who are planning here. You know, we have people here that's planning and we we on the other side planning. However, planning must take place and we have to prepare ourselves because, you know, uh, a lot of uh, people in a the movement, they don't really want to see, you know, us come together. You know, if they're promoting their own cause, every anything outside of their own cause is an enemy to what they're doing. You understand? So if they're promoting, hey, I want to be, you know, uh, uh you know, I want I want to sell land, or I got a project. I want you guys to support my project. I'm building a, a big piece of a land, and I'm gonna have all this stuff you guys can come to. But send me money so I can do that with that with your money. You understand? So if anything else that's coming in the way of that, that's gonna be competition to that. And then you know, uh, and, and our people not having integrity and being of low character, it becomes into a personal uh beef it goes into a personal beef so in any case you know the you know it, there's a push now towards uh the gambian people and the gambian authorities to hold diaspora accountable for their actions with on the uh continent 
there's been a lot of disrespect towards the the Gambian people and their value system. There's been a lot of disrespect towards the authorities there, the Gambian authorities. You know where in in uh, in cases, the high profile cases where it was told to you know keep everything off of social media, to and to 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 preserve the integrity of the Gambia West Africa and the integrity of, uh, of, of the movement and our role there. And then, uh, you know, those wishes were uh, disregarded through right out the window. You know, we can't go anywhere talking, you know, thinking that we're just going to take over and take control. We can't let anybody do that. Just a few crazy people that should not be, that should be, have not been allowed into the country. I, t- I talked about that last year. There's a continue a continuing pattern of that. And you guys are going to see how detrimental that is to those who, who are coming over, you know, uh, the wrong way. I got this Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin Donuts cup. They say American runs off Dunkin'. It should be America runs off of debt. All right. America runs off debt. My mom worked her whole life. Everybody I know, my you know, my my people here, his mom just retired. And we gave our life over to this Western society, you know, generations. Even our children, the, the, the blood spills on the streets tonight. This is a weekend. There's gonna be plenty of our people that's gonna die this weekend. We need to be taking a moment of silence instead of going out to the to the clubs on the weekend. You know, it's a very, very, very dark time. And, uh, you know, it's glossed over. People don't see, you know, and then and, and, and until it's too late. Remember the story of Noah. Remember the story. He built that ark. It took him 40 years to build that ark. Only seven people ended up on it. But when it started raining, it was crowds that came. They were ready to go then. But you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared to go. And in preparation, you have everything. In preparation, you have everything that you need when you're preparing. You know, so we want a community. and We're uh, uh, building on our community and we're doing it in a way that everything is protected. We're a lot wiser and a lot smarter now. You know what I mean? We know we have some enemies and everyone know now, you know, how to stay away from the snakes. Everyone know who the snakes are. So it had to get to this point. You understand? Unfortunately, you know, it had to get to this point. However, you know, uh, we, we must to to free our people so that we can have happy and productive relationship. We got to uproot the, 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 the bad ones. If, if that's not done, you know, the overall community will never be able to move forward and never be able to heal and they will not be successful. You understand. However, the, the you know the communities that the, the community that we're building that we have in place, of course, we're successful. We're going to continue to see, be successful because we we uh you know we're integrated into the market. We know everything in terms of the longevity of market and being in the market and being able to operate in a way where uh, our investment won't be at risk for attack whether it be in uh today or a future date you know uh, uh you know you know you know if things become uh, unstable or whatever the case may be we want to have our own community and have that for great so you know there it is obvious that there's many lies that are easily being spread easily being spread on the YouTube about uh, myself, you know, which is the primary target because of my contributions and, you know, uh, uh, my overall uh, sincerity in um, building the movement and making it happen. You know, uh, you know, there was some uh, the, the issues in the past where the haters came and all of that. You know, there was people who were loyal to them that instead of a pilot you know, that should be making an apology. You know, however, they got to, you know, people don't like to be wrong. They like (laughs) they don't like to be wrong. They got to stick with their guns. But the Gambian authorities will make them accountable and we are going to make sure that everybody know. We're going to make sure that everybody know uh, when that time come that, you know, uh, 
you know, who it is and, you know, how they're going to be held accountable. And we're going to keep that under wraps. So I wanted to go on, you know, I, I don't see anyone in the uh, the message chats, you know, so I wanted to, you know, I'm, I'm actually making sure that I'm here. I'm build. I'm looking to build my subscribers. You know, I'm going to push towards that. I'm going to push harder, especially when I get back you know, on the other side, because there's a lot of people out there that's just phony baloney. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of people, man, you know, like, uh, it, you know, it's, uh, it, you can't take them serious. You can't take them seriously. So in any, in any case, you know, we have to look out for, you know, uh, people who are promoting the movement, but really, really have a lot of, uh, wickedness in their heart. You know, mass Quasi go hard Gambia. You my email, Quasi Boy at Yahoo.com. You can reach out to me. Those who are watching, if you are a person who, you know, uh have some influence. And so I spoke to someone today who's a uh, you know, who can make things happen. It don't take a lot. It don't take a lot of people. You know, if you're those type of people, you know, contact us and see what we're doing foundationally. We're putting together together a accountability team. We're getting some lawyers and things involved and we're going to bring and hold these YouTubers accountable for their actions in the Gambia. We need to do this for the Gambian people, you know, Gambian brothers and sisters, you guys should want to uh, uh, see this happen. We are at that point. Now let's go ahead and push and make sure that, you know, we can, we hold these people accountable and we can move forward. We can move forward with a, 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 a renewed spirit, that, you know, this stuff will not be tolerated. So until next video, like, share, and subscribe. Mass Quasi, go hard, Gambia. Good night.